Only on NBC5 News tonight, there are a lot of interesting people buried in the heart of Medford near Siskiyou Boulevard. That's home to the historical IOOF Eastwood Cemetery, one of the oldest in the area. All week long, we've been sharing some of their incredible stories on people who left their mark on the Rogue Valley long before any of us were born. Tonight, NBC5's Mariah Mills is sharing the story of the first and only Jackson County Sheriff killed in action. He was honored with the largest funeral procession the Eastwood Cemetery has ever had. One of the most prominent families in the Rogue Valley, the Singler family, came here in the early 1900s. August Singler was a salesman, working hard to support his wife and his eight children. August Singler was a, he was a, he was a, he was a hustler. He was a mover and shaker. He was a real energetic guy. He, uh, he sold sewing machines, he sold patent medicines. Ben Truey, a Southern Oregon Historical Society volunteer and local historian, says Singler ran for Jackson County Sheriff in 1912. Kind of campaigned against, against what was seen as, as the, the Jacksonville machine, you know, the, 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 the people who had been running government for a long time. He uh, printed handbills that showed him and his, his family, his, his multitude of children, and under it it said, this is the party I'm working for, his family, rather than any, any political party. Singler was successfully elected sheriff, but tragedy struck only four months after he took office. Truey says the new sheriff was pursuing a 19-year-old punk named Lester Jones, who was known around town for causing trouble. He was doing, committing petty burglaries and, and, and theft, and uh, the word was that he was trying to put together a gang. He wanted to rob the Beekman Bank. Truey says Sheriff Singler found out where Jones was staying and had a guide take him to the cabin to serve an arrest warrant. I guess knocks on the door or opens the door with his pistol in his hand, whereupon Lester Jones shoots him, shoots him. His first, the first bullet went through Shing Singler's armpit, through both lungs, and this, the second bullet uh, destroyed one of the knuckles of his right hand. Singler had to shift the pistol to his left hand and fired all six shots in the pistol and all of them ended up in Lester Jones killed him quite dead. Sheriff Singler was able to make his way down the hill to his guide. Truey says Singler knew he was a dead man and told the guide it was a fatal wound. He was driven to the newly constructed Sacred Heart Hospital where he said goodbyes to his family. He died the next morning. They had the, the largest funeral procession ever witnessed in the in the cemetery. The cemetery was full of people and he still lies here today looking down on the gravesite of Lester Jones, the 19-year-old punk who killed him. The well-known family still resides in Medford. The Singlers are, are still in the valley today. Uh, one of his grandchildren is buried next to him, William Singler. Bill Singler was served on the city council in the 60s for a term or two. Then was elected mayor in 1968, and his, then it, in turn his grandson is very well known. He's Kyle Singler, who was a professional basketball player. Even today, more than 100 years later, local law enforcement agencies still gather to honor the sheriff who lost his life in the line of duty. Each May, a peace officer memorial ceremony is held at Singler Plaza in Medford. It's located between the Jackson County Jail and the County Courthouse. Mariah Mills reporting coming up tomorrow. We'll hear about a World War II hero who was part of a famous airstrike known as the Doolittle Raid.